Fun fact, someone uploaded this entire movie on YouTube, and no movie studio or anything has cared enough to take it down. That's when you know it's going to be good. And another reason why is because it was never released in theaters. This is a 1994 Fantastic Four movie. And I have watched it, and I can't express how much I regret doing so. Before I start talking about how awful this movie is, I don't mean any disrespect towards any of the actors or anyone who worked on this movie. They themselves even talked about how awful this movie is, so if they can, then I can too. Now Stanley, in an interview with Kevin Smith, even said this movie was never intended to be released. Instead, it was only made because the studio would have lost the right to make a Fantastic Four movie, if they hadn't by a certain date, and they didn't even try. <laughs> And Marvel Studios have even denied this movie's existence <laughs> until it was leaked online. Now, the thing I want to talk about first is, well, The Thing. This is terrifying. The Thing is scary in this movie. Even scarier when he's talking, because his mouth doesn't move properly. Therefore, it looks like he's trying to practice ventriloquism. Now, if this was a horror movie, maybe it could get past its design for maybe a slasher. But it's not. And did you know that apparently the majority of the budget of this movie actually went into the thing's costume? <laughs> the majority of the budget. This costume actually costs a couple million dollars. <laughs> that can't be real. But apparently it is. They also apparently had to re-record a lot of the lines for the thing in Doctor Doom because you couldn't understand a single word they were saying. Which might be a reason why his mouth doesn't move properly with what he's saying, because I don't think it makes any sense. Because his mouth will be saying one thing, but you'll be hearing him say another thing. I would show you, but for some unknown reason, YouTube doesn't like me having clips on my channel anymore, because I tried doing that a while back, and I got told I had to delete those videos. Well, I didn't have to, but if I didn't, I wouldn't have got monetized. But you know what, on the topic of Doctor Doom, let's talk about him next. I don't even know how to explain it, but he reminds me of the Ghost of the Future from The Christmas Carol, but a high school play version of it. And fun fact, Mark Ruffalo auditioned for Doctor Doom. <laughs> As in Doctor Doom in this movie. He didn't get the part, which is probably a good thing. Because I'm not sure how that would have, you know, affected his career. And this movie doesn't understand the idea of perspective. So during a scene where he's writing stuff down, it's literally flipped. You have to read it backwards because it's mirrored. I don't think I've ever seen a movie do that. <laughs> okay, yes I have. In Suicide Squad, they do have El, Do uh, sorry, El Diablo's tattoos. But his tattoos for one scene is one thing. Literal writing <laughs> is another thing. His costume also looks like cheap plastic and like literally a shower curtain put over him. And I have to admit, because I saw that this movie didn't have a, how one may say, big budget for things that weren't the thing, that whoever made his costume definitely didn't have a lot of material to really use. So for that, I will understand that why he does look like this. The thing, though, I, I can't get over that. That is just ridiculous to me. But Doctor Doom, I understand why he would look like this, because I saw that they weren't allowed to use the budget for most things other than the thing. That's also why there's not a lot of CGI, which also might be a good thing. Alicia Masters is also in this movie, where she has a scene I can't get over. <laughs> you see, Alicia is blind. And there's a scene where you're showing her perspective of being knocked out. She shouldn't be able to see what's happening. She's blind. How do you forget one of your characters is blind? I mean, I do appreciate that they did actually make her blind in this movie, unlike the other Fantastic Four movies where she wasn't. But they still didn't, you know, do it very well because they seem to have forgotten that she was. And you might be wondering, what about the other three characters part of the Fantastic Four? They literally are pretty much just one character. I mean that as in they're practically been written as one person, but like they split all the lines between three people. With them being written as there really is no difference between them. So they all blend together. Mr. Fantastic's powers are done with a broom and a shirt, which is really obvious. 
Sue's powers are obviously the most cheap, so I don't think they could really do that one wrong. Well, Johnny hardly ever uses powers, and when he does, it looks like a Snapchat filter. While their costumes are literally like pajamas. <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess when you think about it, when you're fighting crime, you want to be the most comfortable. So, I guess... But, like, they're literally fuzzy suits. But if you want to watch this movie, just look for it on YouTube. Because, like I said, someone uploaded it and uh, no one cared <laughs> enough to take it down. And it's been on YouTube for the past four years. So that's when you know they really don't care. This movie itself, in my opinion, is a train wreck. Like, absolute train wreck. But, to be fair, it was intended to be one. <laughs> Also, weirdly, there's always, like, a zoom-in on all the characters. Like, no one ever shows the t bottom half of their body. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but every single scene, like, they're cut from the top half. It's like a zoom lens. I'm not entirely sure if I'm crazy and I'm imagining it, but it really does feel like it's zoomed in on them. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> like always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!